as you can tell, I've not really slept and I can't find the Sonic Groomer anywhere. I'm going to look like an old wizard if I carry on like this. And regarding the receiver, I still can't get it working. I just don't know where to look. I did find this though. This is a compact disc and they were outlawed in 2019 because obviously they're made of plastic and plastic is toxic. And by then, uh, cobalt crystals were being used anyway instead of plastic, so there was no need for them. Now cobalt crystals, the Matrix would recognize those, and I know from chemistry that cobalt is one of the elements used in this disc. So I'm thinking I'm gonna scrape the top layer off, mix it in with a bit of glue, put it onto the receiver, and hey presto, I will have a recognized receiver and can send off to Briel or Saturn or wherever else I want to send messages to. The problem is, I've got no idea how to do it. So I've been looking on the matrix and there doesn't seem to be anything about that. There's no one, well, no one's ever done this, have they? So that's getting me down a bit and also the fact that Sierra's still not been in contact. I was on the receiver for a few hours and all I got back was static. Why has she not got back to me? I'm pretty worried now. And that's making me want to get out of here even more as well. And looking on the matrix, it's just so infuriating looking at a 2D screen. How on earth did we cope before holo technology? It's just so much easier, but it is what it is. Hopefully, if I keep searching the matrix long enough, I'll find something about cobalt and wavelength receivers and... Wait a minute, I've got a book on wavelength receivers. Hold on. Oh, why did I move everything? Chill! <laughs> Here it is. Okay, so, if I flick through this ridiculously long book long enough, I might just find the answer. Cool. I found the information I needed, and I input it into the pad, and it found the receiver! It didn't work though, so I tried the cobalt idea and I got the CD and I scraped off bits of it and I mixed it with some glue and put it into the wiring and then connected the fibre optics and then I switched the entire system off and left it for about 10 minutes and when I powered it back up, it worked. <laughs> it bloody worked. So I recorded a, a distress message and I sent it to the lunar surface and the satellites beamed it out into space and It'll take a while for it to get to Briel, but I'm as good as out here. And I'll soon be on Briel. Since that day in April 2025, I, me as a 10 year old boy holding my parents' hands and standing in the street and watching the Cerulean ships fly overhead. Ever since then, I've wanted to be on their world. They did a um, two circles around the earth so everyone could see them. My dad said they were showing off but for me it was important for everyone to actually see alien spacecrafts going above them and not just a film on the HV. And then we came back home and we watched the full ceremony with the ship landing in this um, forest area just outside Beijing and the foreign secretary Min Zok, he gravitated down from the ship and walked towards President Far and they're so tall, they were just towered above every human being there. And everyone just held their breath, not knowing what was going to happen. And then Minzok just crouched down and extended his long, thin arm towards President Farr and spoke in perfect English. I believe this is your custom to shake hands with a new friend. It was incredible. The, the rapturous applause all across the world, well, apart from my dad. And yeah, it was amazing. And then throughout the years they helped us so much. They helped us develop cures and vaccines and new technologies and yeah I and now I'm going to be on their world living amongst these people and the human colonists there. I just I can't wait. Yeah I've not slept yet but I'm too excited. I was thinking, the Ceruleans have probably kept some scout ships in the sector in case anyone needs rescuing. 
So when I was packing last night, I've started packing smaller boxes just in case a scout ship does come and pick me up and I just can only take the essentials. So that's what I'm doing. Um, packing little essential boxes as well as the big ones. I've got the Matrix up and running. I've even got the Translator app working just in case they come back to me in Ponsite, which they won't because, let's face it, they knew English before they even landed here. But covering all the bases. And then I started looking at pictures of Briel and the moon of Palance where Josh and I were going to get married and just can't wait to be there. And then I started looking at images of Earth and saving them to my pad just so I have something to always look back on. Uh, I was looking at when New Korea was formed and the, the Cerulean landing, um, the New Thames Barrier, and of course America, loads of America. When the um, Ceruleans first landed, they said that the ice caps were melting because of man-made pollution, which most of us always thought, but the American government at the time said, no, no, this isn't us. And so in 2027, when the sea levels start to rise, they refused the help of the Ceruleans. I think they didn't like the fact that we're no longer the world power, and they hated the fact that the alien landing happened on Asian soil and not American. So they said no, which just seemed stupid. And by 2029, there was 45 meters of sea all across the world. And all the coastal towns, I think about 35% of America was underwater. But even though they refused help, the Ceruleans still did. And they built these um, floating cities, uh, completely self-sustainable eco-cities, they're amazing. And they're all tailored to each city. So Manhattan has got its own floating island with its own Statue of Liberty. It's pretty cool. So yes, I've kept all that on my pad, so when I'm sipping cocktails on the moon of Palance, I can always look back and remember. Hmm. As you can probably tell, I've still not slept in about 48 hours. Um, yeah, I was waiting for Briel to get back to me or something, but then I started worrying and why hasn't Sierra contacted me again? It's been almost a week now. And let's face it, there's only one reason she hasn't and that's because she's been captured, which means the rebels are still out there. And she's probably been tortured or killed or something. And if the Rebels are still out there, <clears throat> they might not have been able to trace a wavelength receiver, but I bet they can trace the beam that I'm pumping right up to the lunar surface. That satellite's probably flashing and they've probably seen me now. And it's only a matter of time before they come and get me. I mean, I know I'm 200 meters down and I'm in this strong box, but I need to sleep, but I can't, my brain just won't switch off, and this silence is killing me. Oh, I won't be as paranoid if I have some sleep, but what if Briel contact me, what if the rebels contact, what if Sierra contacts me? I can put the system on, high alert, I can put the volume up. Oh. Activate matrix. Matrix activated. Activate sound control. Sound accessed. Turn volume up to full and alert me if any message is received. Executed. Confirm. Confirmed. Done. Right. <coughs> I need to sleep. I've had 11 hours sleep and still nothing. Why haven't they got back to me? I've not heard anything from the Rebel, from the Briel, from Sierra or bloody Mickey Mouse. This is ridiculous. I've traced the signal. I know it's gone to the lunar colony. The satellites have transmitted it. I even checked on the Matrix and saw it leave the sector. It takes about 30 to 40 hours to get to Briel, so why haven't... It takes 40 hours to get to Briel, but it'll take 40 hours to get back to me as well. Oh, 
I swear this place has fried my brain. Right, stop panicking and just pull yourself together. This is a good thing. This means I can record more images before I leave. This is fine, this is good, this is a good thing. Right, this is fine. Um, yeah, so I was thinking about um, Seven Wonders Park before I fell asleep last night. I'd forgotten all about it actually, but um, yeah, that's definitely something I need to record. Um, yeah, in 2025, when we knew that the sea levels were going to rise, the Ceruleans said they would help. So you already know about London and being moved a kilometre back and the um, technology to actually move the monuments and the buildings back as well. Well, that same model was implemented across the globe. And as well as cities, we also had to save our historical monuments. And top of that list was the Pyramids of Giza, obviously. So when we told them about the history of the pyramids, the Cerulians were interested in the ancient Egyptians, but also the ancient seven wonders of the world. And without us knowing, they decided to rebuild the other six wonders. Um, in 2026, yeah, it was a year later, um, yeah, they built the Seven Wonders Park. It's in a, a tiny little town called Krudersdorp, I think, something just outside Johannesburg. And it's built around this huge lake. And they put the Pyramids of Giza at one side, and you could see the reflections on the lake. And then everything else, the other six wonders around there. And the reason they did this was because at the time, the whole world was really scared that, well, a lot of the population were going to lose their homes. And although huge skyscrapers had been built and floating islands had been built and new towns had been built and cities had been built in Africa, people were still scared about having to leave their home. A lot of people wanted, if we had the technology to move all the monuments and all the big buildings, why couldn't we move their homes as well? But there just wasn't the time to do it. You can't just move a, you know, two billion people's homes as well. So they wanted to do this to show that the human race has survived through a lot of catastrophic, catastrophes and a lot of hardships, but we've always pulled through and our history is important and that's why it should be preserved and saved. And so people flocked to this park in Africa and it was, my gran took me when I was 13. I don't think my father wanted anything to do with the park because the Ceruleans had built it, but yeah, I remember my gran took me and um, you could only ride on a boat around the lake. You couldn't walk around, I suppose, so you couldn't ruin any of the uh, ancient uh, monuments. But yeah, so we sat on this boat and the Colossus of Rhodes was in front of me. And it was just huge. And as you go in, you actually go underneath his legs. And then you see the Pyramids of Giza in front of you. And they're reflecting on the lake. And then the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. And they're just, the, the flowers were everywhere. It was just incredible to see. And yeah, I, even if, I think it still stands because why would anybody have knocked it down? But in case I don't go back or anybody ever returns to earth, I want to record it all so people can see what we actually achieved in our time on earth. It's, um, it's a really incredible place. Oh, and I've got the footage I filmed on this actual camera. It's not very good, but it's personal to me. Hey, I've not heard anything yet, but it's just past midnight, so they could call at any time. I've been recording tons of stuff onto my pad Loads of images came up about the war, which I wasn't going to save, but then I realised that the colonists in Briel, have, they left before war broke out. So maybe it's good that they could see what actually happened and meet someone who was so active in the war. Because of who my father was, I knew a lot of people in Parliament and even the PM. And so when I was enlisted, because of my astrophysics and astrosciences diplomas, they put me in defence. We weren't building big weapons uh, to destroy our enemy, we were building shields. We wanted personal shields for the men and women on the front line, and huge shields to cover the cities. And because we weren't building weapons, the um, Ceruleans helped us build this diffuser cannon, which would stop all laser fire. And it worked. It stopped all fire, we could capture um, the enemies and take them away, no one was injured, no one was killed. 
Unfortunately, it didn't take long for the warring factions to realise this and stopped using laser cannons and started using old style guns. Shields weren't effective against old style bullets being fired and millions of people died on every single continent. But it wasn't guns or shields or anything that we could build that stopped the war. It was the realisation that what they were fighting for was pointless. When the Ceruleans landed, we talked to them about religion and they dismissed the idea. They'd been around for over a hundred million years. Humans have been around for 200,000. And they've seen a lot. They've seen a lot of the universe. And when they gave us the complete map of our universe, it was over 10 times bigger than anyone had ever dreamed of. But more than that, our universe is part of a multiverse and there are almost an infinite number of universes in there. And religion just doesn't make sense anymore. You know, when religion was founded 2,000 years ago, well, whenever, it was, what, the Earth was flat and the sun revolved around us and that was it in the entire galaxy. And we just know that that isn't true now. The Cerulean said that most new species pray to deities as a way to find themselves or realize why they're here or try and explain what's going on when there isn't that much information. But now we have the information and religion's defunct. You know, there's no need for it anymore. And even though it's not conclusive evidence, it was enough to sway more than half the population. And that's why war broke out. Because the ones who couldn't accept that religion was a fraud warred with the people who did accept it. But after four or five years of fighting for God or whatever, they realised that they were actually wrong. And so the war was stopped by people dying or surrendering. And that's when the massacre of Earth began, because without the threat of heaven or hell or God or the devil, people found they had no moral compass. I was right. This does need saving. Good morning! I thought I'd do today's video diary early because, well, the real could contact me any second and I could be whisked away from this planet. I've saved about a terraquad of information and I've packed everything and of course I've got this. Four weeks of solitude. It could be preserved in a museum. Probably not, but you never know. I've been thinking a lot about my family and, and of Josh. I know it sounds stupid, but when I leave this place, I'll be leaving them behind. Yeah, I know they're dead, but every memory I have is on this planet and every memory I have of them is also here. So leaving this behind, but leaving them behind as well. My first day of school, or when I tripped over and my mum cleaned my knee, and my dad taking us boating. My first kiss. It's all here. I thought of leaving this behind and going to live with people with a, that I've never met before, and being on a, an alien world 22 light years from Earth is just scary. I know it's the one thing I've been going on about for weeks, but now it's so close, I'm. I suppose I'm frightened. It's just last minute jitters. What am I going to do? Stay in this place for the rest of my life? Just so I can be closer to them? Well, I suppose it does make a really grand coffin. <laughs> it's fine. Everything's packed and when Brio get in contact then... That's the receiver. It wasn't Briel last night, it was Sierra. She said she had been captured by the rebels and they put her and her family into a slave camp. She said there are hundreds of rebels still in Bangladesh. And from what she's heard, there are these slave camps operational all across the globe. When her mum died, she realized she had to get out and so she made new friends in there, told them about me and that I had access to the Matrix and maybe I could help. 
so they helped her escape by flirting with one of the guards, getting into a food truck and getting out of the camp. I don't know, it all sounds a bit like an old movie to me. She asked me if I can get access to the Matrix and if I can see if there's any way for them to escape from the camp and how many rebel bases there are and... I told her I'd see what I can do, but... If I put GPS on, they're gonna know where I am straight away. If she's right, if there are rebels everywhere, I'm gonna flash up and they're gonna be here within minutes. At the moment, I've got a straight line to the lunar colony, which I'm guessing they're not even monitoring, but GPS is different. That's searching from my location around the Earth. I don't know what to do. I do want to help her. I want to see how many rebels are left. I want to see if she's telling the truth, and if she is, if what they've told her is the truth, or just something to scare them into submission. Apparently they were clearing the rubble away so the tank boss can get through. I don't know what to do. And I guess this is why Briel haven't got back to me. The Cerulean is not going to come and pick me up if there's a war still raging. What do I do? I told her I'd think about it and let her know tomorrow, but I can't keep her waiting too long. If she's telling the truth, it's not going to take them long before they know that she's missing. end up. I should not use the GPS. There are thousands, if not millions, of rebels left up there. <laughs> there were slave camps, just like Sierra told me. Hundreds of them, dotted everywhere. And they've cleared the road so the tank bots can get through, and the rebels have commandeered any building that's left standing. Their flag is flying all across the world. And now there's no one left to stop them. There's no government, no armies, no police, nothing. They are literally rebuilding the human race on top of the bodies of those they've killed. I also zoomed in on Memphis docks, and it looks like they're building spaceships again. And if they get them flight-worthy, they could go back to Briel. And if they get there, I don't even want to think what they can do. So I contacted Briel, or at least tried to. I sent the message up to the lunar satellites, but the satellite went down as soon as I got there. And I know the rebels have traced me. It's now only a matter of time before they get here. Luckily, I'm 200 metres underground and it'll take a while for them to get through graphene titanium, but... I have to leave. So... Packed a bag and it's got a couple of days of clothes in it and some water and food and... I've got my pad, which means I've kept a record of everything down here and the last few years of Earth. And hopefully someone from Briel will pick up my signal and get me off this place. It's my only hope now. Oh shit, I need to um, contact Sierra and tell her that... Too late.